Hey there, interwebs, and welcome back to How Fascinating. Quick little mineralogical question for you. Which of the following gemstones is not real? A. Green sapphire. B. Red emerald. Or C. Blue carbuncle. If you grew up anywhere in the English-speaking world, you're probably used to sapphire and emerald being synonyms for blue and green, respectively. And if you're a fan of the Sherlock Holmes books like I am, you may be aware of a short story called The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. If, however, you're a regular to this series, you can probably already tell that the answer to the question is C. Blue Carbuncle does not actually exist. We can get into the details later, because this video is going to be about gemstones and some confusion which may arise. To start off, allow me to introduce you to the five cardinal gems, sapphire, ruby, emerald, diamond, and amethyst. Blue, red, green, white, and purple, respectively. Change white to black and you've got the five heraldic colors. Change purple to black and you've got the five chromatic dragons of D&D. When the word sapphire is used as a color, it means blue, but sapphires can come in almost any color, including green, yellow, orange, and purple, and these are known as fancy sapphires, you know, as opposed to the ho-hum ordinary sapphires that you can just buy at any corner store for a dime a dozen. These fancy sapphires can come in any color but red, because a red sapphire is called a ruby. Yes, seriously. You see, rubies and sapphires are chemically identical. They're both corundum, not to be confused with carborundum, or aluminum-3 oxide, Al2O3. The only difference is the very slight impurities which give them their distinct colors, and this means Pokémon has some explaining to do. We can chemically synthesize both in a laboratory, and there's an interesting way to tell a real ruby from a fake one. Shine an ultraviolet light on it. Real rubies are photofluorescent, meaning they glow brightly when you shine a black light on them, but synthetic rubies will not. Hey, I just found a practical use for the sonic screwdriver prop. One exception to the rule that rubies are red sapphires is the black prince ruby, which is actually a red spinel. Yes, spinels are actually real gemstones and not just something they made up for Resident Evil. The reason this literal jewel in the crown is called a ruby and not a spinel is because it's been in the possession of the English monarchy since 1367, and rubies and spinels were only chemically differentiated in 1783, more than four centuries later. Prior to then, it wasn't uncommon for all red gems to be referred to as rubies, regardless of their elemental structure. The two gems are also commonly found in the same areas, since they have similar chemical composition. While rubies are aluminum oxide, spinels get magnesium involved in the mix as well. The name comes from the Latin word spinella, which means spine in reference to their pointed crystals, and Wikipedia tells me they're weak to medium magnetic, but probably strong against electric attacks since they're ground-based. Getting back to sapphires, there's also star sapphire, which exhibits a property known as asterism. This is the appearance of a six-rayed star-shaped pattern when viewed with a single overhead light source, and it's caused by intersecting needle-like inclusions in the underlying crystal structure. The same phenomenon can be seen in star garnet, and star garnet will always remind me of this gladiator spider's eyes because they must be made from the stuff, or pure hatred. Those are the only two options. Fun fact, outside of terrifying spider eyes, star garnet can only be found in remote India and Idaho, the gemstone state, which is why it's the latter's state gemstone. Speaking of red gemstones, let's get around to addressing carbuncles. Before I go any further, be warned, carbuncles are also a type of skin lesion or abscess. When I tried to research them for the first time after hearing of them, I imprudently just googled carbuncle, and Google was all like, here's a bunch of gross medical pictures! Carbuncle is also a type of gemstone, though. It wouldn't be in this video if it weren't. It isn't a specific gem, however. A carbuncle is just defined as any red gemstone, and it's usually garnet. Although garnet is red, it's also an anagram of argent, which means silver or white in heraldry. I also think carbuncle would make a good name for a butler, and by extension, a dog, because any good name for a butler would also be a good name for a dog. Alfred, Sebastian, Sodbury, Shotsworth, Carbuncle. Come here, Bunky! As previously mentioned, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote a short story for The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes called The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. I'm guessing he'd heard of carbuncles with enough context to know that they're gems, but not the specifics. Either that or Watson Dunn goofed, depending on whether you prefer the Watsonian or the Doylist approach to lit crit. And then there's emerald. As a color, it means green, but just like sapphire, emeralds can also come in a whole spectrum of colors, and unlike sapphire, this includes red. This means that Jim Thighs wasn't technically incorrect when he mentioned a red emerald in the Eye of Argon. No, he was just wrong about everything else in that novella. Still, that's one point where Thighs succeeded and Doyle failed. Red emeralds are also known as red beryl because that's what emerald is, a special kind of green beryl. There's also quantum gemeralds and ephemeralds, but unlike red emeralds, these are limited exclusively to fiction, my Dungeons and Dragons campaign setting in the latter case. While we're discussing mineralogy and colors, what color do you think limelight is? It's gotta be bright green, right? Wrong. It's actually white, because the lime in its name doesn't refer to the color named after the fruit, but rather the material burned to produce it, which is calcium oxide, also known as quicklime. When this substance is heated to 2400 degrees Celsius, it produces a bright white glow, and this was used for illumination in theaters prior to the invention of electric lighting. Now you know. To recap thus far, emeralds are usually green, but red emeralds also exist. Sapphires are usually blue, but also come in every color but red, because a red sapphire is called a carbuncle or a ruby. As with rubies, you can also learn something about diamonds, too, by shining a UV light on them, but unlike rubies, it's actually the less valuable ones which glow brighter. 
Of course, when I say valuable, I mean by market price. Personally, I think having a fancy rock that glows is way cooler than one that doesn't. As you might reasonably expect by now, diamonds, like just about every other gem, come in a whole host of colors, but they all glow in only one of two colors, a bright blue or a sickly yellow-green. This fluorescence is caused by nitrogen impurities. As much as I hate the diamond industry, it would be neat to have a pink rock that glows blue when I shine my sonic screwdriver toy at it. If I may digress momentarily, it is said that diamonds are a girl's best friend, but it is also said that dogs are man's best friend. People try to use this to argue which sex is smarter, but counterpoint. My neighbor has a dog named Diamond, and she's everyone's best friend. Absolute cinnamon roll, 10 out of 10. Odd side note, I could originally only remember her name because Ving Rhames' character from Con Air is named Diamond Dog, and David Bowie made an album called Diamond Dogs. I know, weird, right? Honestly, given my choice between a dog and diamonds, I'll take a dog. Actually, no. I'll take the diamonds, sell them, and use the money to adopt a bunch of dogs. Like, 12 of the big fluffy monsters, or however many you need for a sled dog team. Let's call it 13, and let's call them Dory, Nori, Ori, Oing, Gloin, Biffer, Buffer, Bombard, Ballon, Dwalin, Keely, Feely, and Thorin. That feels especially appropriate, given that my college nickname was Bilbo. What was I talking about again? I got distracted by dogs, which is a common issue for me. Let's see. Dogs, dwarves, the Arkenstone. That's right, diamonds. Pray, tell me, what's a diamond worth, really? Well, that depends on a whole mess of factors, and one of the more important ones is its authenticity. Synthetic diamonds are generally less valuable. Because they have zero impurities, they also therefore don't have that characteristic rainbow sparkle. You could use this as a hackneyed metaphor for how it's our imperfections which make us beautiful. You could also twist the diamond metaphor around to point out how our concepts of value and self-worth are entirely artificial and mere social constructs, usually being manipulated by one or more industries trying to wring money out of you. If I were the kind of person to propose with a diamond ring, I'd use an uncut diamond because they're beautiful the way they are naturally, just like my significant other. You may now suffer diabetes from how sickeningly sweet that sentiment was. Lastly, amethyst. In the interest of candidness, purple is my favorite color. Well, second favorite. First favorite if you're one of those people who doesn't consider black to be a real color. Now with my cards laid on, or at least somewhere in the very near vicinity of a table, it should come as no surprise that amethyst is my favorite gem. It is, after all, the purple gem. You may have heard of green amethyst, but that's a misnomer. Green amethyst is more accurately known as praseolite or vermarine. You can also just call it green quartz, because that's what it is, and for what it's worth, amethyst is just purple quartz. They're the same base material, just in different colors. It's basically another ruby versus sapphire situation. The name amethyst comes from the Greek word methisko, meaning intoxicate, and the prefix a, meaning not. This referred to the ancient belief that the stone would protect its owner from intoxication, which led to the practice of wearing amulets and using chalices carved from amethyst to prevent drunkenness. It didn't work, obviously, but that doesn't stop me from wanting an amethyst goblet just to look cool. So there you have it. Sapphires are blue, but also sometimes green. Emeralds are green, but also sometimes red. And rubies are simply red sapphires. Amethyst is purple quartz. Green amethyst is green quartz or praseolite. Diamonds are a scam, and blue carbuncles are non-existent. Thanks for watching, and have a fascinating day.